Okay, so in our session today, we are going to talk about Go, and this is going to be specific to quick sets, beginning the usage, usage of quick sets, what the purpose of them are, how we can create them, how we can use them, and consequently, at the end of our presentation, how can we back those up for storage? So let's start out by talking about what are quick sets. When we think about the methods by which we're going to rip a file, we're going to be applying a quick set. So when I select the open button up here in the rip, I can select from my training images, I can select a specific file, and this is where I would see my quick set choices. Now, as we are a brand new install, we will always see default. We will always see a default quick set, and this is our default method of ripping files. So quick sets are a set of instructions by which we are going to rip the file. There are many things we can apply to the quick set. And this in turn, is going to save us time and automate our processing. So the big thing of using quick sets is to automate our tasks. So the first thing is I'm just gonna bring this in with a default quick set. As you can see, I'll click on open. The file is going to come into the RIP and it's ready to print. So that is just the default quick set. But let's explore what the settings are inside our quick set. Up at the top in our toolbar, we will see the feature configure printer. And when I go into configure printer, we will see the message configuring printer will stop all ripping and printing. Do you wish to configure printers now? This command is going to put us offline. So we want to make sure that right at this moment, I am not in the process of ripping or I'm not in the process of printing. If I were, and I say yes, those two features would be immediately canceled. So I am not ripping, I am not printing, I will say yes, and I'll go offline. I'm going to configure my printer. So here in the configure printer menu, the very first tab is our quick sets. We see default, and I want to point out default cannot be deleted. You can see how delete is grayed out. Default can be edited. However, the name cannot be changed. So this is just Onyx's standard default quick set. We need a way to rip our files, a set of instructions by which to rip the file. And that's our default quick set. Now, conditions we can set in here, we, and we can see in this main page, we've got a lot of different choices. We can have the selection of choosing the media and page size from the printer. So over on the far right, whatever is currently installed on this printer, media type and roll size is what's gonna automatically be selected. Uh, we can also uncheck that and choose something different. And this could be a quick set option right here. We have a quick set for a specific type of media. I would like to point out here that this is the area that we would select our mode. In some cases, the media profile may have different mode settings. And as you can see, there's a draft quality set, a fine, fine art quality setting, or a normal 300 or 600 CT resolution. Again, these are different choices based on the printer that we're working with. And so this could be where we select our mode as our default setting. In addition to that, you'll see some basic settings, sizing, scaling, number of copies, rotation. In the lower left part of this menu, there is an advanced button. And in the advanced button, we see more options. So again, we like to expand this and show that out of all of the different things we can accomplish in our ripping controls and settings, 
perhaps we can make a quick set to set those conditions and apply and automate our tasks. So we've got a lot of different choices in here for our tile setup. If we work with tiling, we can enable that. If we work with um, applying bleed or grommets or any other type of registration marks or sewing marks, we can activate those settings in here. So there are a lot of different controls. Okay, so let's take a look at creating a new quick set. So at this step, I'm in my configure printer menu. I will go to new and I'm going to make a simple quick set that's going to give me a two inch mirror image bleed. So I'm gonna to go to that advanced button. I'll go to my bleed setting here on the left. I will enable the bleed, put in my amount. Because the link is connected, we are going to get that value for top, bottom, left, and right. And again, we can break the link and independently set that bleed attribute. My bleed type, I'm going to leave that as a mirror image. And I'm just going to do this very simple setting in here and I'll click OK. And that's my quick set. I'm going to give this the name and I'm going to say bleed. Well, actually, let's do this. I'll do a mirror bleed. And then I'll click OK. And there's my quick set and I'll click OK again. So we always have defaults, but then we can make additional quick sets. You want to have quick sets that are going to perform tasks that are going to save you time and automate your process. And this is going to help with the automation. You're going to be picking these quick sets and using them as the preset condition. You want you can make as many quick sets as, as you need here. And again, as you need is a key thing here. Use quick sets as you need them. I'll click on OK. When I want to work with that quick set, I'll go back into the open command. I will make my choice for my image file. And under quick sets, this is where I would now select the new quick set I created. And again, I created that under configure printer that gave me the quick set tab and I was able to make a new quick set there. I'll do a little scale set to this, and I'll open in Job Editor just to show you um, the appearance of this two-inch mirror bleed. So I'm going to open up this file into Job Editor. We can begin to see the bleed. There's the word onyx, and you can start to see that mirror image, two-inch mirror image. Now, in Job Editor, I could go to the Finishing tab. And I will be able to see exactly the settings that were activated in the quick set. So I'm able to see my two inch mirror bleed. And I can see that confirmation here visually as well. I'm finished with looking at this in Job Editor and I want to return to the RIP. I could go to the fourth icon across the top, Submit, or I can go to the Print tab, Submit. Now the file will leave job editor, return to the RIP, and now I have my file ready to go. So quick sets are going to automate our process and keep us consistent and save us time. When I click on open, I can pick my file that I want to work with, and then I can choose whichever quick set that I want to apply. So let me go back into default. And I'd like to show you another way of creating a quick set. I'm going to use my default quick set, select this particular file, and open in Job Editor. And I will scale this again. File comes into the RIP queue, opens immediately into Job Editor. So here in Job Editor, I chose default quick set. If I meant to, should have selected my mirror bleed, uh, I could go into file and at this point I can say apply quick set and I can choose my mirror bleed. I click OK and it would appear with the mirror bleed. Let's take a look at another example of creating a quick set here in Job Editor. 
for visual, I'm gonna go back into my finishing tab and go into grommets. And I'm just gonna add a top and bottom uh, grommet marker. I have a total of three. Now I'm gonna position these just three quarters of an inch from the top and one inch over. Just to give you an example, my grommet marker is looking fine as black where it's very light in my image, but then where I get the dark area, it's hard to see that. So I'm gonna change my grommet mark configuration. Instead of being a solid line as black or white, I'm gonna choose alternative line, which will make this black non-printing, black non-printing. So it appears black, white, black, white, but it's easy to see based on the subject matter, there's some light tones and some dark tones and I'm able to see my grommets. So let's just say that's gonna be my file. I wanna create that setting. If this is exactly how we want our settings to be and we wanna apply this to a quick set, at this point in job editor, I could go to file, export as quick set. So in my RIP queue, configure printer, make a new quick set, manually typing in the information in the fields. Or for visual effect, I may open a file in job editor, apply some of these different conditions like I'm doing here, and then export that out of job editor as a quick set. So let's go through this procedure. Export as quick set in job editor. This screen is just offering me additional choices or options if I want to also rotate, um, put the job on hold and so forth. I'm just gonna click on save. And now I'll save this out. I've got a directory folder saved called exported quick sets. The name of the quick set will be the name of this job, but that might not describe what this is gonna do. So I can say, Grommets and hit save. And now I've just saved that out as a quick set titled Grommets. This job is completed. I'll submit this back to the RIP. Once this ripping is completed, I can now go to configure printer, go offline. Yes, I'm not ripping or printing. And in my Quick Sets tab, import that recently exported Quick Set from Job Editor. So I will click on Import. I will browse for my file. And I save that in my RIP. Um, I purposely put that in my Samples folder. I have a folder called Exported Quick Sets. So here I can select my grommets. That writes an ONT extension, which is the extension of quick sets. And now I'm going to select all my choices, which is the one, and I will import that. Now I have a new quick set that was created by visually being in job editor and applying those conditions, seeing how the file were to work out and make that update. If I select from its quick set here and edit, I will see in the advanced button, in the lower left corner advanced, there's my finishing features and there's my grommet setting. So I can see exactly what I configured from my job editor command, file export as quick set, save the file, come back into configure printer and import that quick set. So the idea behind the quick sets, again, it's going to automatically apply the features by which we set that up to. I'll go into open. I can pick a different file. And I'll scale this one as well. And at this point, I can pick my grommets. I still can open in job editor. Maybe I want to do that for a visual. Or maybe I uncheck open in job editor and I just bring the files in. All right, and then I submit. Now at any time I can make an edit, edit my file in job editor, make changes to the grommets, 
And if this is just a once, once change, we're not going to make this repeatable. I could just apply that to the job. But if it is going to be something that perhaps I have those grommets in the work, as well as maybe I add bleed and put those grommets out in the bleed, I might have two quick sets, one quick set for grommets, one quick set for bleed and grommets. And again, it's all in how we want to name and identify those steps. So let's do, go through that method. I'll open up a file. I'll go back into that flower image. That was a pretty one. And I'll pick my grommets quick set. That's maybe one I'll start from, stem from, and I'll go back to those settings. I'm going to open this back up into Job Editor. I'm going to return to the Finishing tab. And besides just having my grommets there, maybe I also want to add a top and bottom bleed and push these grommets up into that bleed area. Um, so I'm going to go over to the bleed tab and enable my bleed. Now I only want top and bottom, so I will break that link and I'll put in a two inch top, two inch bottom, mirror image bleed. I'll go back into the grommets and now be because I have activated bleed, the choice is active to place grommets in the bleed area. So I can turn that checkbox on. The position of these are st is still going to be controlled by these offsets. So the top and the bottom, I'm going to put in zero so you can see uh, a reference of where this is referring to. Zero is right at that edge. From here, I have two inch mirror image bleed going up and going down. My edge zero is going to be left and right. So it's right on the center line, okay? At this point, I might say for my two inch mirror image, the idea behind this might be that I fold over that two inch bleed, I fold it to one inch, and then maybe I center this registration mark up into that one inch, so I come up a half of an inch. So I can set this for 0.5, that position that up a half inch. And then how about the center mark from left side in or right side in, my left and right sides. Maybe I want that to also just be a one inch setting. So now I can save this out as a quick set. File, export as quick set. Again, additional settings. They don't apply to me, so I will just go to the save button. And for the name, I might describe this for grommets. I might say lead with grommets. And again, whatever we decide to name this, it's all in the naming convention that would make sense to us at our shop. One thing I want to point out when it comes to the naming convention of our quick sets, our data that we're working with, we want to be careful and stay as an alpha numeric. We can use space bars. Okay, so we we can use a space bar, we can use a hyphen, and we can use an underscore. Those symbols, if you will characters are acceptable. Anything that's going to be a backslash, forward slash, pound symbol, any of those types of symbols really are not a good idea to give to any naming convention. Sometimes softwares can uh, misinterpret that data. So just giving that a simple name, bleed with grommets. I'll save that to my folder, export it with quick sets. And now this job is completed. I'll return and submit this to the RIP and return to the RIP. Once my ripping is completed, I'm no longer ripping. I can go into Configure Printer and go offline. Yes. And now I will import that exported quick set. So that's my feed with grommets. There they are, and import. So as you can see, little by little, we can build quick sets based on tasks that we want to perform. I can automate my process by bringing my files into the RIP, using these quick set parameters and applying 
as the preset. And that's going to save me time so I don't have to manually go through those menus and activate the features. It's going to keep me consistent because should I do this manually every time, perhaps I skip a step, I forget a step, I get distracted, something happens, and then I omit to turn some feature on. So the quick set is going to keep me consistent and save me time and automate my process. Right, it's going to apply, apply those parameters. So again, I can go back into open, select a particular file, pick my new bleed with grommets. I could open with job editor, or if you choose not to, that's fine. And then I've got my 60% scale, bring that information in, and that's going to automatically apply to the settings. Okay, so one other area I want to show you here in the rip queue, if you're looking at these thumbnails and perhaps you can see the quick set feature of the bleed or the grommets being applied, perhaps you can't really quite see that so well. Naturally, we can select the file, right click and open in job editor. And in job editor, we will see a larger preview, which we can then see the effects of being applied, whatever our quick set information had been. We can also go into job properties. So I'd like to show you this choice here. Job properties will open up a little mini window, if you will, while we're in the rip queue. And here I can see my preview. If I go into my finishing features for the bleed or the grommets, I can see exactly the same settings that I applied in my quick set. And if need be, I can modify something. Again, if this is just one example, oh, we need to make a change, we can make the change here. Um, and again, this can be a quick way of looking at your file or making an edit to the file, uh, or we always have going into job editor software as well. Okay. So that's using our quick sets, opening our files, picking our file, and then selecting the particular quick set. What I'd like to show you is another way of using these quick sets. As soon as I create a quick set, it'll automatically generate a hot folder for me. So what I'm gonna do is kind of pull this menu aside. I just selected edit quick sets up at the top, and this is just giving me a quick preview of my quick sets. I'm going to go into my folder structure of my RIP. So I have my software loaded on the C drive. I want to make this relationship, so I'm showing you both these menus here. When we want to reference the hot folder for that's referencing the quick set, we would go into our RIP folder, into input, into that printer driver that we're working with, and here you can see the hot folders bleed with grommets, grommets, mirror bleed, whatever we decide, tiling, rotation, scale, any of the types of things we want to apply and we title our quick sets, those created quick sets write this hot folder. This is an automatic feature. As soon as we create the quick set, the hot folder is created. Should I go back and delete a quick set, the hot folder is deleted. So this is a self-managed feature. But let's take a look at this. Inside my grommets hot folder or quick set, this is the location that I would place my file. Again, I place my TIFF, EPS, PDF, JPEG file. And that would then come across into the RIP as if I said open and use the quick set grommets. So the very top level right here, this level is the default quick set. And then you'll notice inside mirror bleed, this is where I would place my files. This little subfolder we see info is really the instructions for the hot folder, which is the quick set. 
So let's talk about using this feature. I'm going to um, first close out of the screen. And then I'm going to open up two of my menus. So again, let's revisit that location of the hot folder. I'm in my RIP input folder for the specific printer. And then I see all of my hot folders, which are my quick sets. I'll go into my training images folder directory and I will um, select the particular image. I'll right click the file and copy. And then I'll go into one of my folder hot folders here. And at this level, not the info folder, that's the instructions of the hot folder. But at this level, I will right click and paste. Now I am copying and pasting because I am on my C drive moving to my C drive. So I don't want to move. I'm just going to copy and paste. But one nice thing about this is these hot folders could be shared across our network. And then we can go to other computers that are on our network, perhaps the design department, art department, maybe there's a um, customer service rep department, and they might be putting the files into these folders for us. So I'm going to paste my file into the mirror bleed hot folder. I'll return to the rip and I will see that file is coming in right now and that's completed. So the automation is there to use the hot folders. Those hot folders, again, could be shared across our network. And then on another computer that's on our network, Mac or PC, we could mount that volume or map that drive, depending on what we're doing. And then we have shortcuts of those on our desktop. And we could prepare our files as we need to prepare our files and then simply drag and drop them across the network will be a copy, drag and drop them to the appropriate hot folder which is engaging the appropriate quick set. So this would be a matter of creating all of the hot folders that are you know, quick sets that we're going to be using. Once we create those quick sets, we have the hot folders automatically. Then we would go through and explain to the department, whoever's responsibility is gonna to be to put the files in there, what these hot folders are about. They're referencing certain quick sets. And so when you're working with grommets, put the file in grommets. If you're working with a mirror image bleed, which is to be canvas wraps or gallery wrap setup, we can activate and drag and drop the file into that folder. And again, remember, we can name these as we like. So perhaps we have a certain client account. We might name it based on that client name. And that makes it very clear as well to put the files into that folder. So any device, any situation where we can reference these across our network, Mac or PC, iPad or tablet, you know, any of these types of devices that are on your network, should that method apply in your workplace, you can save these files, put these files over across the network. And in turn, they come directly into the RIP. All right, I'll take one more file. I'll copy that. I'll go into the Bleed with Grommets hot folder. Again, this is the hot folder slash quick set. Think of them as one and the same. I'm going to paste that file in there, go back into my rip queue and see my tomatoes images coming in and ripping and applying that particular quick set. So all of the quick sets we create generate a hot folder. If I delete a quick set, the hot folder is deleted. And those hot folders could be shared across our network and then referenced. And we can communicate to the team of people to describe what those represent. And they can write their file, drag and drop their file, copy and paste their file into those hot folders. And consequently, they'll appear here in our RIP queue. Okay, one last thing to talk about. And that's going to be exporting out these quick sets. We've made a few of them. Let's talk about backing them up. So I'm going to go back into the configure printer command up in my toolbar. I'm going to go offline. Yes. 
And here in my quick set tab, we were able to import those quick sets that we exported from job editor. Now I could export as a backup all of these quick sets. So I want to save these off. It took me some time to create. I want to save them off as a backup. So I'll hit export. I could manually select or I can say select all. I'll click on export. And then I've got a folder um, that I've put in my samples folder called exported quick sets. Where we go to save these exported quick sets could be local to the computer, but you can also browse across a network, have it on a removable hard drive or some other type of storage. This is going to be a backup of your quick sets. If something should happen where one day we come in and this computer is not functioning or something is wrong, you know, we had a unfortunate power outage and it took the computer out or something to that effect, we will have a backup. So we should put this backup on another hard drive or server or some other location so that it's not just on this PC, right? It's a backup somewhere, it's being stored and archived. For now, I'm just gonna go local. It's what I'm working with. The name of the quick set, the exported quick set, is going to be the printer that we're working with. And then you're gonna notice the extension OQS, Onyx Quick Set. And this is gonna be a bundle of all of those selected quick sets. I'll hit save and just that fast, it writes the data. Now, if anything happens, if somebody were to delete these, we are always able to go in and, you know, if I said delete, and I'll go through and delete these. I can always go back and import and bring in that information. So I can go back to my archive and, um, whoops, one level up, samples folder, and bring in this information. Was I in here? Yeah, I was in here. There you go, exported. So I can always bring that in and I can see my selection. Now I've already got default, so I'm not gonna add in my default printer, but I will bring in the three that I'm missing, the bleed with grommets, grommets and mirror image, and I get those back. So it's an important thing to understand. You've made these quick sets, they have value. It took some time and you got them just right. So let's export them and back them up. Okay, one more thing to point out. All of our documentation, reference materials is on our website, onyxgfx.com. If you log into your MyOnyx account, and if you don't have one, you can create one here. Create a MyOnyx login. Once you log in, you'll see MyOnyx, and at the very top, you'll see documentation. And it is in here that you will find the documentation that's going to, not much documentation, but it's gonna be more documentation as we go through these pages. You'll find the documentation about backing up Onyx. We just talked about the quick sets, but there's more information for backing up other parts of our area. Here's our procedure, how to create a quick set. And again, this PDF is something that you could download, okay? And this goes through those steps, creating a quick set. Again, other documentation will have, there will be on one of our pages here, there will be a choice for backing up Onyx. So I wanna point this out, lots of really good, useful information, backing up Onyx, and that's gonna be our paper, our procedure for backing up on it. And one of the things is talking right there, backing up your quick sets. Okay, so I just wanted to point that out. Um, again, it's an important aspect to know about getting your information, getting help, getting reference material. Under my Onyx, we have documentation um, as well as videos, and that's really good reference material. All right, so that's gonna conclude our presentation on our Quick sets, everything involving with quick sets. So I thank you for your time and please do visit our website.
create a Myonix login and you'll have lots of good information and documentation and videos as reference materials. Thank you.